King of the Hill looks like it's coming back. So before it hits our TV screens, I'm gonna get you caught up on the entire life of Ireland's number one propane salesman, Hank Hill. Here lives a competent, trustworthy salesman of propane and propane accessories. I'll go into his childhood with his father, meeting his wife, and relationship with his son. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lydia, and this is the complete timeline of Hank Hill. Oh yeah, and in case you're wondering where my recent Chris Griffin timeline has gone, it was taken down by Disney. So please make sure you're subscribed so you can watch my videos before they claim any more. Thank you so much, and let's get on with the video. Growing up with Cotton Hill. To many people, particularly Dale Gribble, Cotton Hill was a legitimate war hero. He served in World War II and was horrifically injured in Japan. A Japanese machine gun blew my shins off in WW2. So what? So basically, Cotton left for war at a lovely tall height at six foot four and returned at just five foot. That being said, it was hard to say how many of his contradictory stories were actually true. Hank loved his father, but their relationship was difficult at best. Despite being successful in high school and after, Cotton was inexplicably disappointed in Hank. I think you cut my ear. I think you cry more than the guy I killed out from under that helmet. Meeting his lifelong crew. High school was a key time for Hank Hill for a number of reasons. It was at Arlen High they became a football legend as well as meeting his future wife, Peggy Platter. These experiences set the stage for the life he would build after graduating. Unfortunately, that also included the same group of loons that he was friends with in high school. These included Dell, Bill and Jeff who bonded with Hank over these years. Even after they graduated, they remained friends throughout their lives. They even all bought houses in the same neighborhood and drank beer together in the same alley on a daily basis. This proved to be problematic for Hank at times. Bill went through a traumatic divorce from a terrible woman and despite being incredibly uncomfortable with emotions in general, Hank was his main source of support. Dell was a conspiracy-obsessed crazy person, while Boomhauer was Hank's only normal friend, though understanding him was rather difficult. Put a little old around there, just like Bobby Hunter said, it's like it'd go boom, boom, just like that. Hank the High School Hero a big part of Hank's life in high school was playing football. He became a hugely successful player, holding records as a running back that remain unbroken to this day. Hank wants to go pro, but destroyed his ankle during the Class 2A State Football Championship. Although this ended his football ambitions, he at least still had his childhood dream job to fall back on. I'm gonna sell propane and propane accessories, if my grades are good enough. The end of his football career likely played a huge role in Cotton hating Hank, and the fact that the military rejected Hank for having a narrow urethra. I have a narrow urethra. Keeping all of that in mind, Cotton's dislike of Hank was more about Cotton being an absolute jerk than anything else. Hank marrying Peggy. Being a high school football hero in Texas is about as close as one could get to becoming a god. His high school dating life was never fully revealed, mostly because Hank has never been the type to kiss and tell. But one thing that's for sure is that Hank caught the eye of Peggy Platter and vice versa. They were the classic high school sweethearts who ended up graduating and moving on in their lives together. Long before the beginning of the series, Hank and Peggy got married, cementing their relationship. They may have had their ups and downs over the years, but they always love and respect each other. I married you because, you know, the love. Oh, Hank. The irony of their relationship has always been that Hank talks way too little, while Peggy talks a little bit too much. Propane and Propane Accessories 
After high school, Hank ended up selling jeans at Arlen's Jeans West. It was there that he impressed a man by the name of Buck Strickland, owner and proprietor of Strickland Propane. Buck ended up hiring Hank and giving him a good career position working for him. Hank's passion for propane and propane accessories was one of the most oddest things about him. He spoke about propane with more love and affection than he ever spoke about his son. I provide the people of this community with propane and propane accessories. Hank often looked at Buck as a father figure, which wasn't difficult to understand given how poorly Cotton treated him. At the same time, Hank would also have to come to terms with the fact that Buck was a philanderer, a drunk, a gambler and a crooked businessman. But he was still infinitely better than Cotton. Bobby Hill is born. When Hank tried to sign up for the military alongside Bill after high school, he was rejected due to his narrow urethra, as explained before. The military was basically concerned that this meant he would have problems effectively relieving himself in combat. The other side of this was that it would make it impossible for Hank to have children. As such, the birth of Bobby Hill was an absolute miracle for Hank and Peggy. Bobby could not have been more different from his father. The clock radio smells like my Game Boy, but it tastes like my library card. The two of them had completely different interests and often butted heads because of it. But when push came to shove, Hank and Bobby were a team. They loved each other and it showed. <sighs> okay. I love you no matter what you do there. Phew. Let's go get something to eat. Luann moves in. Hank Hill loved his privacy and his personal space. Calling him a private man would be as big as an understatement as calling Cotton merely difficult. Don't sass me, boy. You ain't too big for me to give you a licking. That just made Luann Platter moving in that bit more difficult. <laughs> <sighs> Peggy's niece Luann moved in with the Hills after their mother stabbed her father and went to jail. It was for the best as neither of her parents were particularly good role models. Luann took over Hank's den, moving in permanently by the end of the first episode. And not surprisingly, this was hard for Hank to accept as having her there infringed on his privacy and his personal space, two of his favourite things. What was more surprising was that his heart softened and he started to see Luann as a daughter rather than a niece. Yep. Yep. Good Hank arrives. Good Hank was Cotton's infant son with Dee Dee, his second wife. The arrival of Good Hank allowed Cotton to kill two unnecessarily mean birds with one jerk stone. Uh, Dad, Hank is my name. Not anymore, I'm taking it back. He's Hank. I mean, come on. The man actually named his newborn infant son specifically to punk out his nearly 50-year-old son. Absolutely unheard of. Cotton found another gear in this case, proving that he may just be the greatest troll who had ever lived. I was spending time with my favorite son. You got a problem with that? Meeting his older brother. As if Good Hank wasn't enough of a curveball, it turned out that Cotton had one more trick up his sneaky sleeve. The Hills accompanied Cotton to Japan for a ceremony aimed at easing the wounds left behind on both sides of World War II. It was there that Cotton reconnected with Michiko, his former lover from those days. She introduced him to Junichiro, Cotton's other son and Hank's older half-brother. Jenny, Juniko, Juniper, Junichiro. Ah, so nice to meet you, Jacello. Hank was oddly enthused to meet his older brother, something he had always dreamed of having. It turns out that the two of them had a lot more in common than looking near identical. They both had narrow urethras. There is no shame in having a narrow urethra. Uh, that was just between brothers. The death of Cotton Hill. 
Cotton Hill was a survivor. The injuries he sustained in World War II could have killed a less ordinary and frustrating man. But he did survive everything that life threw at him. Well, almost everything. He was injured while climbing onto the grill at a Japanese steakhouse while throwing yet again another tantrum. While on his deathbed, he and Peggy had one last confrontation. She wished him nothing but the worst in the afterlife while he called Hank a loser one last time. Peggy lied to Hank about what Cotton had said, but Hank likely didn't believe her. He said to tell you he loved you. Really? He knew what his father was all about. I didn't want you, I wanted a boy! Yeah, I know, I'm a girl, now get down. In death, Cotton screwed with Hank one last time. He assigned Dale the task of blowing up Hank's new shed, a final mission for the only person who actually liked Cotton. It was the one last turn of the knife from the worst father who ever lived. Riding off into the sunset. The final episode of the series left Hank exactly where he wanted to be. He was living in Arlen in the same neighborhood with his family and friends while selling propane and propane accessories. It was hard to imagine Hank being left in a more perfect spot. With brand new episodes on the way, it's hard to say what life will look like for Hank. But it's a safe bet that one thing won't change. So there we have it folks, that is the complete timeline of Hank Hill so far. Let me know in the comments which King of the Hill character I should look at next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.